Greetings, friends. Thank you for joining our meeting today. We're still in the orb of the Leo new moon. And today we closing our work in the Cancer Leo cycle with the topic shared reality of initiation. Through empathy and compassion, we expand humanity's heart. This topic we held uh, since the last full moon, a sun was passing from the sign of Cancer to sign of Leo. That time we came together to invoke the vision of the unfolding plan in relations to manifestation of the principle of sharing in all fields of human activities. And since then, we've been holding this, uh, this topic in our focus. And today, we have a chance to continue sharing our impressions and to offer seeds for our meditation that through the effort of magnetization and radiation will turn into thought forms, thought forms that will lead and inspire humanity as we move through these pains of the shared initiation, initiation of awakening to the reality of soul. So let us start with sounding the statement of purpose. And I invite Birgit to read our purpose. Greetings, everyone. Our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of common good, freedom, and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and cherish diversity of perspectives in our group, creating a space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We serve as an asramic outpost building a group bridge of buddhic energy. We evoke the soul of humanity. We envision humanity as being the seed that is flowering. We prepare the way for the reappearance of the coming one. Today we are a small group, and um, yet, uh, as always, we will follow our ritual of the name in circle, and uh, as a way to bring us together in a group field, recognizing our etheric connectivity across the space, linking heart to heart mind to mind and for that i invite us to say our name and where we're calling from and as we go from one participant to another let's visualize the lines of light 
with which we weave our togetherness. And so I will begin by calling our name, starting with the organizers. And uh, my name is Alexander, and I'm calling in from Brooklyn, New York. And I'm calling Birgit. I am Birgit Rasmussen, calling in from Slagelse in Denmark. Welcome, Birgit. Tracy. Tracy, please unmute yourself. Yes. Hello, everyone. Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. Alexander, would you like me to continue or do you want to do it? Please continue. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, we're having some bad storms here. Aneta. This is Aneta from Denmark. Welcome. Jillian. Hi, this is Jill from uh, Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Helen. Hello, this is Helen, also from UK, uh, but Hertfordshire. Welcome. Judy. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Judy Harrison from Brewster, Massachusetts, USA. Welcome. Lynn. Hello, this is Lynn Green, and I'm in Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome. Martine. Hello, everybody. This is Martin calling in from Belgium, Chateau. Welcome. Now that we are united in our hearts and in our group field, let us link together and share a few moments in silence to align ourselves forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Thank you.
Thank you, friends. So let us turn our focus to the topic that we've been holding in our focus and to the questions that helped us to guide our reflection. And I invite us to spend now uh, three minutes looking at the community impressions board uh, to read uh, impressions that's uh, been shared so far. And uh, the, you can find the link in the chat. Um, and I will bring the questions that's been in our focus on the screen. Shared reality of initiation. Through empathy and compassion, we expand humanity's heart. So let us open now for the sharing. And uh, as we share, let's listen to each other's offerings, trying to recognize the most resonant ideas and prepare by the end of our sharing to offer seeds that would become thought forms through our meditation of magnetization to be radiated to humanity. Whenever you're ready, please unmute yourself.
I can start. Um, today I saw an interesting meme on uh, Instagram. Uh, well, this was actually, a, I think, a short video. It's not a meme. Uh, the video is a video meme, let's put it that way. Where it was saying that um, in each each family carries from generation to generation pain, which goes often un, uh, unrealized. And at some point, uh, a soul comes into that family that takes a role of recognizing and voicing that pain that's been passed through generations unconsciously. And then that soul takes the role of um, healing that pain by deeply experiencing that pain and by voicing that pain it allows that pain to come to the light and eventually to be healed i think it's captures really well the role that disciples and going back to our questions esoteric groups can and should perform for humanity as we come into discipleship we get capacity of increased sensitivity and first of all sensitivity to pain and it becomes our role to externalize sorry internalize internalize that pain hold it and meditate on that pain bringing that the light of the soul to that core of that pain that we experience within within our hearts and thus start the process of healing process of healing on behalf of everyone else. And so in a way, our work is to hold the space, safe space, in which we can express that pain that we internalize, recognize, and try to become so to experience it as a soul incarnated, bringing the light of the soul into that pain. And when such uh, experience happening in a group formation, it's uh, 
emotionally, it's very difficult for those who's involved. But we still should recognize it that it's part of the process of the healing. And it's part of this shared reality of initiation to awaken to the light of the soul. I'm sharing this um, um, because right before our meeting, uh, I was part of another meeting and it uh, was our uh, Ukrainian group that we meet twice a month, full moon and the new moon. And I'm sharing the experience that uh, we just went through in our small group there. Thank you, Alexander. I read something this week which I think is relevant to this. Um, <laughs> I was um, writing the prayers for church on um, on Saturday, and I found this. I, I sort of keep the ones from month to month when I do them, which is often. And uh, I found this at the bottom of the page. I don't know what it is from. It it sounds extremely like uh, Master M. It says, blessed be the obstacles, through them we grow. He who said this knew all the dimensions of obstacles, and could, because of his experience, evaluate them and apply them for the common good. Construction in the name of good is untiring, careful and solicitous. What beauty is contained in inexhaustible creativeness. He also knows that certain counteractions that are met on the way must be brought to an extremity of opposition. For only then will their meaning become clear and a panacea can be found. Every absurd sally reveals a greater evidence of absurdity when one allows it to roll to the very end. Then all the abominable infusoria, I don't know that word, unfold, and even very uninformed spectators will understand the degree of ugliness. How many times an experienced leader, when able to arrest a flow of absurdity, has restrained his co work let it roll on to the end. An experienced leader calls up his reserves only after the necessary measures have been carried out. What kind of leader would he be if he were to call for maximum help prematurely? The enemy would not yet be fully manifest. The enemy forces would not have reached their utmost tension and the reserve troops would thus be uselessly spent. Therefore, Tacito Adversa knows, first of all, the value of prudence. An inexperienced onlooker may exclaim, stop, this is absurd. But an experienced worker will correct him. This is not only absurd, but also ugly. Wait a minute and you yourself will perceive an intolerable degree of ugliness and ignorance, which will devour itself. It, that, that passage just impressed me a great deal about the 
wars and the horrors going on in the world at the moment. And, and what you said, Alexander, just, just called it to mind. It is an interesting uh, perspective that there's no point stopping something until the, the horror has done its work and people's hearts are almost forced to, to change and, and open. And I think that's to do with, with learning through the agony and through the pain and, and torture of, of what is going on. Thank you. Yes, I would like to share something um, about the first question. For me, it's trying to be conscious of what is hindering the flow of love and the compassion. And so trying to see the glamours and also when my thoughts are not harmless and try to be as harmless as possible, letting the love, the light and the love of the soul flow through me and also being more and more conscious of the fact that we are one, one with each of of every be being in all the kingdoms and then in fact, we have a responsibility of the, also in the walls. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm trying to be as, um, as harmless as possible in my everyday life. Thank you. Yeah, we live in this world of duality where we can look and see the pain and agony and yet we need to bring in the light of love and joy. Um, and it got me to thinking about the second stanza of the great invocation, uh, the end of woe has come. Um, you know, pain and suffering we're coming to the end of that. And in order to build the great defending wall, uh, to end the rule of evil, we must bring, finally, bring joy in somehow. Um, we keep repeating like the movie Groundhog Day over and over and over again, the same mistakes, the wars, the hatred, the, the fighting. And it all has to do with the individual you know, selfishness or self, you know, as opposed to selflessness. In order to reach that first initiation together as, as soul-infused individuals, a soul does not hate. A soul does not, um, you know, its quality is joy and love and uplifting. And we know now that energy follows thought and we also work with the law of economy. So we know that if we work in groups, that we can, with our energy thoughts, uh, which manifest things in our reality, it's, it's a time now to balance the negative that's in the world, so to speak, and start increasing and lifting the vibration to that of joy. And it's very difficult. It's a challenge, extreme challenge, especially for those that are living in those places or areas or the children that are being cruelly uh, 
you know, treated through sex trafficking and, and all this kind of thing. It's almost like our job also is not just to maintain that neutrality so that the good energies can come through, but almost lift up to this higher vibration as the first question, how can I as a disciple further expand and radiate my compassion just by being happy and filled, not happy, but joy, feel the joy every day, feel grateful, feel the joy. By doing that, we are one cell in the organism. And as more of us start to feel that joy, the light starts coming and shining more so and, and the darkness starts to dissipate and go away. I had a very, very unique gift given to me yesterday, and I'd like to share it briefly with you all. I uh, had to take my husband to uh, see the eye doctor, and um, while I was waiting in the lobby, there was nobody there, and I was reading a book, and um, a woman came in with her mother, elder. They were both very elderly, and I found out later that the elder one in the wheelchair was her mother. So the woman, it was an empty lobby. The woman came and sat right next to me as they called her mother in to see the doctor. She radiated. Unbelievable. She was just radiating. And she she said to me, she said, I want to, to tell you about something. She said, I had blood clots in my brain and they had to do surgery on me, and I died on the table. And she proceeded to tell me her entire near-death experience. Now, needless to say, this woman looked um, poor. You know, she didn't look like she had, you know, a lot of money or anything like that. But the joy, she kept calling me her sister, and she kept talking to me in such a way, it was, it just, permeated the entire room, the feel of it. And I think from that experience, that's why I'm saying we are always looking at, because there's so much negative in our world, especially with all the wars and everything that's going on. Um, Gosh, it's like if we could just be like her, walk into a room and just lift that whole room up. It was amazing. So I just wanted to share that because I do think we have that ability. And I think working with hierarchy, I mean, if we're letting hierarchy in and work through us, that's just lifting everything anyways. And energy always tries to match itself. So if we're lifting to the higher energies, those lower energies are not going to have any choice because there's going to be too many with higher energies. It's going to lift the whole thing up. So I think... Uh, I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Sorry I was so long. Um, hello, Tracy and everyone. This is Lynn. Um, Tracy, to uh, just reinforce and add to what you said, um, uh, in, in a smaller in a smaller sense, uh, still, um, I was at an 80th birthday party yesterday for um, my husband's brother-in-law, and um, his whole family came, his brothers and sisters. Uh, he has several, and they came from the East Coast and from California and from various places for this one moment of celebration, which was wonderful. Um, but, uh, you know, Steve, my husband and I were, um, were there, too, because we are, uh, of course, <laughs> um, Steve's sister is, is married to this gentleman. And um, but what it was just a simple thing in, in the morning. Um, I just asked uh, in my meditation that this be a wonderful event, a full of light and love and right relationship. And um, I don't think I've ever been to a more light-filled, love-filled uh, social event in my life. 
um, just asking for that one little bit of help. Um, it certainly changed the nature of it for me, and I think, I think for everyone, uh, just a little thing. But but I think it fits right in with what you were saying, Tracy. Um, that light just spreads. The joy spreads. Um, I ask for joy, and uh, it was a very very joyful afternoon. Um, thanks. One more thing I might just add quickly that I, I think you probably got the impression, but that it it seemed to have raised the level of energy significantly compared to what is the, is the norm for us. It just raised the whole thing up. Um, having asked for help and having asked that it um, be filled with light and love and uh, right appreciation and joy. Thanks. Actually, sorry, I thought of one more thing. If you don't mind me just adding one more thing to that. Um, I was getting a feeling for a couple of days before that um, there was going to be some sort of connection to talk about esoterics. And I thought, oh, well, you know, we'll see um, what happens. But sure enough, um, one of the members of uh, my brother-in-law's family um, started talking about his meditation. He was he had lost his wife a few years ago and turned to meditation. And um, I had the opportunity to uh, share with him some new resources that um, through the Bailey books and through beginning with William Meter and and uh, he seemed very responsive. So that and that was a uh, I think a telepathic experience and in some in some sense uh, anyway thank you Yes, they are interesting points. I've always been hoping that I'd, I'd sort of accidentally run into people that would open the way to discuss some uh, matters of esoteric meaning, but uh, I don't think it's really happened yet. I might have had one or two. I've got one friend who has stayed in touch with me and is showing an interest so i don't push it too much but i i just answer the questions she asks and we can see what happens uh but on the first question i think as long as we remember that we are part of humanity i'm afraid i'm rather guilty of thinking that humanity is something separate from me because of the way we sort of discuss it but we are part of it and i think if we exhibit empathy and compassion everywhere then it's bound to rub off on at least one or two people thanks
I was thinking as we were talking, and now when it just said that, you know, we repeat, humanity repeats its mistake again and again and again. It's interesting to me because that about actually movie, The Grand Hog Day, as probably everybody saw. If you haven't, it's worth watching. It is the moment when he is really changing, then he stops making the mistakes. It's, it's the, not the issue of repeating the mistake, it's about working out the matter that is filled with those qualities. And you, it's like, you know, the land, you know, in uh, Scotland, I guess, maybe in Britain, you know, and uh, now you, you plow and then the stones come out and they come out and they come out and they become <clears throat> fences, stone fences. There is more to come. So that's how from our matter, I understand, comes this unenlightened uh, part. And sometimes it's not even unenlightened, you know, it's just really pure. Internal, you know, it's there are things that need to surface to become visible, to become experienced, and to become consciousness. So I think right there from experience to consciousness, you know, that's where we stand as a bridge, because otherwise the experience might become just an endless experience of the same. It's not so much repeating, it's that this quantity needs to be transmuted, transformed, transmuted, you know, and uh, that's where we stand. Along with the great ones. <laughs> yep. So, you no. Know, You know, as, as, as we're passing, as we stand, like talking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a balcony and people who passed this morning and uh, they saw the flowers, you know, and the gentleman complimented, you know, it's a beautiful flowers. And now they, they come back after many hours and I'm standing again. And so he looked at me, he laughed and said, great flowers. <laughs> and this is, but that's exactly to what I'm saying, because now it's not just a measure of polite thing. It's a measure of acknowledging that, that we meet again. The flowers are still beautiful, but our connection deepened. You know? Despite the formally, to just repeat the same phrase, but the, the intention of that phrase was different. It was connection. So expansion of the heart is this capacity to connect with more, with deeper, with the um, with um I don't know. Yeah. With things that are not, you know, ugly. They're ugly, but they're ugly now because we live differently, you know. We step back like four, four hundred, you know, a thousand years ago, two thousand. That's norm. That's not even norm. That's basically advanced version. The thing is, the perspective. We compare ourselves only with our former selves. We compare the situation with the with the with the, what it was before, and we hold the vision of what it can be. And we pay attention to with what what resources we're going to need to make it so our human resources our planetary resources our spiritual resources and things that you know sometimes we need to evoke not sometimes for me or for nowadays almost all the time invoke the higher uh, hope so thank you
Um, I have been thinking uh, about two different ideas uh, and looking to merge them. One is the idea of identifying or identity and coherence. And the other one is the role of the Ajna Center. And as I was reading, I realized that the left eye is um, the eye of manas, the right eye is booty, but then the third eye is the, between the two. And it it really, to me, stood for that, that in-between place, if you will, uh, the place that soul has. But also, uh, when you think of the ajna, it is between, between hierarchy and humanity, between booty and manas, between the left and the right eye. Um, and thinking about standing within the Antakarana and being able to identify on all the levels. And first and foremost, we are humanity. Uh, and then with that higher part of humanity that uh, in some ways has raised up, but also can raise up. And we are that part of hierarchy, if you will. Um, and standing within the Antakarana like that, and understanding the I am that and that am I, you really do get a broader sense of oneness. Uh, I had a friend who was feeling ill and everybody's first thought was, uh, you know, to be compassionate, but then to want to heal. And sometimes the soul really wants uh, that experience for an individual. Uh, so I think that standing there and trying to see the meaning behind what is happening as we hold in compassion, rather than not understanding what's what is the what is going on through that experience and what might be a higher outcome. Uh, so that sometimes just holding is that important piece. And um, I, I do agree that radiating uh, is important. Uh, and so is magnetizing. Um, can we collapse all the hearts together? The heart of humanity, the heart of the new group of world servers, the heart of hierarchy. Um, can we bring down and bring up? Can we stand in that midway point? Can we, through identification, cohere uh, a greater expanse of the oneness at all of those different planes, not just the one, uh, which is what we try to do as a new group of world servers, but can we co have coherence within humanity as a whole? Can we raise that up to um, awareness, consciousness, thinking, rather than uh, anger experience, can we move it out of astral and into that uh, manas, into that mental plane? Um, so these are all things that I'm standing in and working with, how to be the most effective uh, and understand that all expansions in some ways um, are fire expansions. And sometimes fire is not comfortable, um, but you know, as we expand, humanity expands, hierarchy expands, there is that great expansion going on. And, uh, you know, both believing in that, but also supporting that, supporting our own and supporting uh, all of humanity as it goes through the, through the fire, which uh, is burning right now. Just like to just comment on that triangle of the right eye, the left eye, and the Ajna, which DK gives in, in esoteric healing as a triangle for dissipating dharma. It's also very much the um, one of the tri triangles in uh, magnetic healing. And I, I think it's interesting that the, 
this idea of healing, uh, one of the big ideas of, of healing is the dissipation of glamour and seeing things as they are. And as you say, Jude is not always making things better. Uh, it, it, healing is bigger than, than that. And I think that dissipation of all the glamours, um, all those clouds uh, around us, is 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 part of of that healing and and indeed as, as somebody said earlier the the bringing of uh, joy into into the world into our vision so we're 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 seeing joy around us thank you. I think um, one thing that's often um, dissipated through the pain and so forth uh, of illness and various various things is the um, glamour of separateness um, that stands between people and um, um, it seems like in my life, life I often see that being dissipated when people are ill um, and even well in in a larger sense war even war you see um, you know that seems to be one of the major things going on there that that sense of separateness is being uh, brought down thinking that every time we are experiencing pain or uh, a discomfort um, and working through that uh, we are somehow lifting the 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 world uh, karma and the world um, a, a small part of of uh, the karma of the world um because we are working through it and um, um, thereby dissipating a, a small part of it. Thank you. I also think that, that um when we're meditating and so forth, um, an easy step that's, that can really help um, the whole thing is to just identify, have a larger sense of identity um, to the whole, and maybe you're mostly all taking that for granted, but I wanted to say it anyway, um, identifying with just everything, um, you know, it, all, all of the kingdoms, all of the, uh, all, all people, all the hierarchy, just trying to be, identify with that allness of, of everything um, and radiate that, that oneness and allness um, as, as we connect to meditate and so forth. It's got to be, that's got to be one one big helpful, <laughs> I think one big helpful um, um, experience and activity, um, awareness.
I, I continue to get these, these uh, seems like messages, visualizations in my mind. Um, that the earth itself is, is experiencing so much of this conflict, um, especially like war, as sores on its skin. And that it's asking for our help to um, transform from deep within um, the earth energies themselves into a higher, into a higher state. Um, it just keeps coming back. So maybe some of you can make more sense out of that than I can, but I keep trying to uh, send love um, as best I can. Um, thank you. On a slightly different tack, I suppose, um, you're probably aware that uh, we're having a lot of uh, riots, etc., in this country um, against uh, the immigrants. And while that is a terrible thing, the encouraging thing is that there are many more people speaking out against riots and uh, separation, etc. And so I think gradually things are changing for the better, moving towards the new age. I guess I see that too uh, in different ways. It's almost like all the ugliness is coming to the surface. Pluto is definitely doing its work of just making everyone aware uh, so that there can be that rallying of this is not acceptable anymore. Uh, I, I think I feel like we're moving toward that on many fronts. Uh, this just can't be the way we behave, we interact. Uh, it, it's not... It's not who we are. And there's a real sense of this is not who we are. We're better than this. And I, I feel it coming on many fronts, uh, but the ugliness really does, you know, fester to the top and boil through. Um, so it is, it is really interesting to try to stand as the observer, as soul, and to look at how uh, this is evolving and, it really can't stay hidden. It has to come to the fore and up to the front. Um, I was working with a, a wisdom group on transmuting the media. And what we looked at is the media really is communication. It's the way we communicate. And as clear as day, it came across that we really need to clear the air. It's kind of like what you said, Lynn. The etheric body is just filled with gunk. We need to clear and cleanse. And whether you say it's hurting the earth, it's hurting all of the kingdoms, um, you know, we have to show our better selves. So I think consciousness is coming, awareness is coming, 
but we are going to through the fire to get there. So thank you. I, I think those are both, oh, sorry, I, can't. I, was, I was just going to say, I think those are related to that bit I was reading from, from Master M earlier. Thank you. I think this process of um, revealing what has been hidden or should we say not hidden, but held outside of recognition, held outside of consciousness, like being hidden into our subconsciousness and um, kind of ignored. As that process happens, what is important is what choice we make. It's what Katya said uh, is very true. That's ugliness, not just being accumulated throughout the centuries and millennia. That ugliness was a norm to a certain extent. That's just the way how things been done. And that's just the reality of uh, uh, our animal part or I mean animal part of humanity which is didn't go anywhere it's it's there it's it got a little bit more civilized a little bit much more uh beautified uh tamed I uh, like to make it more kind of pretty but it's still there and so now when this realization comes what do we choose because as we get in terrified oh my god how this still can be happening there is uh this undertone uh of these of the voices that comes from the opposite side from the forces of materialism from our skillful brothers on the darker path who are trying to infiltrate the ideas that's just how the things uh, and we just have to accept it and just continue rolling with this. And so it's, uh, I observe it's happening and it's exactly what we've been saying here. When we experience pain, what we do with that pain? And it's the, it's, the pain needs to be transformed. The pattern needs to be changed in order to step out of this groundhog day pattern and that's where that choice is made every single moment every single by each of us and it's not easy at all not easy as much as we know how things should be done and how uh, beautiful soul is when the reality comes, that's actually where the will energy has to be invoked to make those small choices. Yeah, that's a really good, good, uh, something that, that has been brought up. And it just immediately came to me, um, you know, how do you know what you want to be or who you are? Um, we find out who we are by knowing who we are not. And a lot of this is coming to the service. You know, am I this or am I that? No, not this, you know, type of thing. Um, and, uh, and I do think, obviously, it's all coming to the surface at this point in time. And the media, because it's, um, you know, it's our uh, non-etheric, but kind of etheric through the uh, 
<laughs> through the wiring, whatever. Um, you know, what that's how we're connected at this time, sharing, quote unquote, sharing our reality. Um, but I think people, it's a big wake-up call, you know, uh, is this who I am or not, kind of thing. And um something that has been brought up several times to me over the last month by different people that aren't esoteric, that aren't, you know, uh, religious type of, you know, like fanatic. I mean, they do have some spiritual background and everything, but, um, uh, you know, or have gone to church and that. But it's been said over and over, and by the young kids, I, I can't begin to tell you like my kids age and stuff, the, the, the 20 year olds to the, to the 35 year olds, the resurgence of, because of the way the world is, people are starting to turn now back to, I don't want to say religion, but it's, it's starting to become an awakening that there's more that this can't be it, you know, and there is no comfort in, not having a higher purpose or a higher self. So I think we are learning who we are by learning who we are not. So. Time runs quickly and um, we approach our meditation time. So let us take a pause now before we go into meditation and recollect all that been shared and think the most resonant idea and think about the words that would express that idea in the best way to be offered in our meditation. We recognize our togetherness. Being united with light of our minds and love of our hearts.
we bring our focus to the group part. Recognizing its vibrant radiance. We expand this radiance upwards towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet. the power of creative imagination we built the rainbow bridge that opens the way to the hierarchy Together as a group, we make step on this bridge, entering the periphery of the great ashram of the Christ. We sensitized ourselves to energy of Leo. Focus on our topic. Shared reality of initiation. Through empathy and compassion, humanity's heart is expanded. We will focus on the group's mental plane. We 
we recognize it in emerged immersed into the mental field of humanity. We visualize the group chalice. Radiant and ready to accept our seeds. Impressions carefully collected and expressed in words. And we are preparing now to make our individual offerings into the group chalice. As each seed is sounded, after each seed is sounded, let us hold a pause, allowing the seed to get in enveloped by the radiance coming from the hierarchical source. When you're ready, please unmute yourself. Being conscious of who one is and radiating love. We identify with the whole in the cleansing and transmutive fire of the heart. May our empathy and compassion for our fellow human beings lift and aid them at this time of anguish for them. Let the Leo energy bring the courage and the will to transmute our karma and bridge the experience and expansion of consciousness. To lift our energy level and radiate it out to others. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Out of the darkness of pain and suffering, humanity now shifts into the embodiment of joy and gratitude and becomes whole. Oneness.
Thank you to whoever composed these wonderful questions. They'll be used in my meditation for, for quite a while. Um, and two things, the earth um, is asking for our help and also is offering its help to us. And um, the one thing I wanted to say, um, the love of Christ shows us the way. Bring to the new sensitivity to the one soul. Let those who can accept collective pain to their heart and expand the heart, transmuting that pain and thus opening the path into the new, through the new way into the future. If you didn't speak, you can make your offering into the chalice, into silence. We see the chalice. Radiance increasing its light we invoke the light of Leo to magnetize all the seeds that have been collected in our group chalice. Let these seeds grow into thought forms. that will inspire and lead thinkers of the world, opening the path for transformation and initiation for the rest of humanity.
we visualize as the radiance of the chalice grows, reaching out to all the corners of the world. We continue holding this visualization as we sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power Restore the plan on earth. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you, friends. And so until we meet again.